true success is not in the learning, but in its application to the benefit of mankind. For Thailand, much alertness and importance have been given to the preparedness for, prevention of, and response to emerging infectious diseases, EIDs. Between 2005 and 2016, three national strategic plans were drawn up and implemented. Currently, the fourth plan, that is, National Strategic Plan for Emerging Infectious Diseases, 2017 to 2021 is being implemented, emphasizing systematic, efficient, and timely actions through multi-sectoral coordination regarding knowledge management and integration of efforts based on previous experiences and lessons learned. Multi-sectoral coordination, preparedness approaches for addressing emerging infectious diseases and antimicrobial resistance at a university hospital. This is Siridad Hospital, officially under the Faculty of Medicine, Siridad Hospital at Mahidon University, besides being one of Thailand's major institutions that produce medical and health personnel. The hospital also plays a key role in providing medical services to more than 3 million patients per year. Amid the occurrence of emerging infectious diseases, IEDs, in Thailand, disease surveillance and preparedness are very important, as each day there are large number of people coming in for medical and health care at the hospital, resulting in overcrowding and constraints in the management of response. Here is the Infection Prevention and Control IPC unit. A meeting is being held to review the IPC plan, which also covers emerging infectious diseases. The IPC team comprises doctors, nurses, and other multidisciplinary members responsible for coordinating with other relevant units in responding to EID infections that may occur. Dr. Sutsan Asanasen, Assistant Director, Siridat Hospital, said, As Siridat Hospital has limited space, each day there are a lot of service clients as well as visitors, and it is difficult to control their entry and exit. The measure that we select to use is that when there is a person suspected of EID infection, the suspected case will be rapidly isolated from other service recipients and then sent to the isolation room, prepared for a crisis situation. That is to be undertaken as rapidly as possible to prevent the spread of germs or infectious agents to other people. Code E is designated for emergency measures for all relevant personnel to practice as per their job description and coordination purposes. The effort is to take the suspected case to the isolation room rapidly, in accordance with the disease control standards for preventing the spread of pathogens. Today, an emergency response drill is being conducted in case there is a suspected case of EID infection coming in with relative for medical care. First, the patient or suspected case will see a bulletin board on emerging infectious diseases. Upon arrival, the suspected case is supposed to inform the medical record official of his or her condition. Here is where Code E activities for infection prevention and control process begin. All relevant units and personnel, including doctors and nurses, will be informed of this matter. That means the new signal center will notify all relevant units, including the Infection Prevention and Control Unit, the Premises Section for Cleaning Action, the Transport Section, the Security Section for facilitating the patient transport process, and the Isolation Room for the suspected case. The Medical Record Staff 
will give a face mask to the suspected case and collect some data about the case's environment. Inform the suspected case of the way to the infection screening and isolation room. And then all related items will be cleaned with a disinfectant solution. As for the isolation room and the screening area, they have been designed and located at the front part of the outpatient department, OPD, so that the patient screening and transport can be carried out conveniently. Here the suspected case and relatives will be asked about various related details according to the infection control action plan before entering the isolation room. Within the isolation room, which has been designed specifically for preventing the germs from spreading to the outside environment, the doctor and nurse will come in to perform a preliminary physical examination and then inform other units of the results as planned. Here all healthcare personnel are required to wear or use personal protective equipment or clothing, such as gowns, surgical masks, and gloves, to protect against infection as per the infection prevention and control requirements. The patient will be transported on the designated route using the transport equipment and personal protective equipment according to the standards for emerging infectious diseases. The principles require that the isolation room and the patient transport path be far away from other people to the extent possible. The isolation room and materials need to be cleaned immediately after use or after the transport process is finished. The isolation ward for EID infected patients has been designed to have its own air ventilation and a separate entry-exit system. The suspected case is brought into the isolation room for examination and treatment. The key to infection control is to clean the room immediately after use. According to the infection control standards and case investigation principle, the illness history of and other information about the infected person are essential. The patient and his or her relatives will be asked by an infection control nurse about such matters and all the information will be used to develop a disease surveillance and follow-up plan. Based on the EID prevention and control principles, the examination and treatment area has to be designed to have an efficient system for preventing the spread of infectious agents to other parts of the hospital. That is also chiefly for the safety of relevant medical personnel. The patient will be given a physical examination by a well-trained doctor and nurse. And specimens are also collected for examination in the lab for confirming whether the person actually has an emerging infectious disease. The specimens will be sent to the laboratory for confirmatory tests. This is the Microbiology Laboratory at Sirirat Hospital. Its capacity covers both general and specific examinations, such as the confirmatory tests for emerging infectious diseases. The results will be sent for use in disease surveillance and treatment purposes. Dr. Su San said, using cold E for patient transfer is intended for reducing the risk of germ transmission. That is what we can do at present. 
But in the future, we need to screen every patient, and we have to use a modern IT system to answer the question of how we can screen every case. The Center of Sirirat Applied Thai Traditional Medicine provides technical and therapeutic services according to the applied Thai traditional medical principles. During an outbreak of an emerging infectious disease, such principles are used for reducing antimicrobial use based on the rational drug use guidelines. Associate Professor Dr. Pratwit Akara Serinon, Chairman, Center of Sirirat Applied Thai Traditional Medicine, said, According to the Applied Thai Traditional Medical Principles, we use two approaches, herbal therapy and health promotion for the body to be healthy, based on the holistic Thai Traditional Medical and Healthcare Principles. That is practical in real life, as when the body is healthy, the illness episodes will decrease. If medications are needed, use herbal medicines instead, so there is no need for any antimicrobials. Here they have several methods for health promotion using the traditional knowledge or wisdom, such as the practice of Lusi Datton, or self-stretching hermit body twists, exercise, for therapeutic purposes. Or the nine square step exercise in a limited space. Applied Thai traditional medical personnel can adopt the two exercise methods and advise their patients to practice them at home. Regarding to the use of medicines, service recipients will receive herbal drugs prescribed under the supervision of the applied Thai traditional medical practitioners. At present, many herbal drugs are produced under the certified standard or quality control process, and their qualities have been proved by research activities. The Thai Pharmacy Laboratory is the place where herbal drug formulas are studied and developed by applied Thai traditional medical doctors for therapeutic application. For example, the use of Gariyet or Fa Thalai Chon Andrographis paniculata for treating common cold and many other herbal formulas developed through drug production research based on applied Thai traditional medical principles. <laughs> Associate Professor Dr. Pratwit Akra Serinon said, The science of Thai traditional medicine has got one weakness for example, research capacity. Now, we are trying to generate several research activities on various aspects of Thai traditional medicine to get the answers for explaining such matters to other medical personnel. And then we hope that they will be able to integrate Eastern medicine into Western medical services appropriately. Professor Dr. Prasit Watanapa, Dean, Faculty of Medicine, Siri Rat Hospital, said, Emerging infectious diseases tend to have a rising severity, and non-communicable diseases are getting more complex. The world is facing health deteriorating threats. Therefore, we have to be aware of such things, or actually, we have to look ahead to be more active in health promotion to protect against threats. Sirirat Hospital has never been reluctant to invest in developing its personnel, technology, and know-how in responding to such diseases.
And this is another example of the management efforts for responding to emerging infectious diseases as appropriate in our own context.